Hey folks, Mike King with Profiling Evil in this React video. You know, there's another interesting twist in the ever-evolving Daybell murder prosecution. Just last week, we all watched as Lori Daybell's defense attorney, Mark Means, pushed for a delay based on Daybell's competency to stand trial. We saw it. Prosecuting attorney Rob Wood adamantly argued against the request, but the judge ruled in, or in favor of the defense pushing Lori Daybell's hearing out further. Well, now Wood has withdrawn his contest to competency, and many of you are asking why. <laughs> so what's changed? Well, you know, it appears that after a more detailed review of the findings of mental health evaluation requested by the defense in March, and probably after consulting with the state's own mental health experts, would realize that moving forward too quickly could create an issue for appeals later down the line. Now, as you recall, an independent psychologist spent at least two days interviewing Daybell in order to provide an assessment that Lori Daybell was not competent to assist in defending herself. Well, District Judge Boyce put a stay on the case, or in other words, he said, I'm going to hold the proceedings while the mental health professionals evaluate Daybell and treat her, preparatory to returning this case to, to the court where she would face murder charges. Well, all of this made one of those little light bulbs flicker in my mind as I thought about Daybell being declared indigent. Defending a murder case is really expensive. Expert witnesses are expensive. But once the court deemed Daybell indigent, costs of experts and et cetera are transferred to the state. It guarantees folks like Mark Means and the experts get paid. Now, the court is authorized by Idaho law to appoint at least one expert at public expense if a question into the defendant's mental condition comes into question, which in this case it has. Well, Daybell has probably already been placed in a treatment facility. It's a secure location. If her mental health is restored, the court would return to normal. If her competency can't be restored, then she'll be given another six months before returning to court. Now, a lot of you have expressed concern that Daybell might not be found guilty by reason of insanity. This just isn't going to happen, folks. The case can only be delayed until she's deemed competent. In fact, it's important to point out that Idaho Criminal Code, that's Chapter 2, 18207, says that a mental condition is not a defense to any charge of criminal conduct. And if you're concerned that Lori Daybell will simply not cooperate with mental health providers in order to remain in the same position of being incompetent, you can find some solace in knowing that Idaho law allows the court to prevent the defense from presenting any evidence in support of a mental, mental status claim if the defendant refuses to participate in the restoration process. Further, the court can go on and instruct a jury that it can consider the defendant's lack of cooperation uh, for its effect on credibility as part of the mental status claim. So that's good news. Bottom line is that in order for Daybell to be found competent to stand trial, Idaho law says she must understand the proceedings against her and be able to assist in her own defense. If Judge Boyce doesn't think she's competent in 90 days, the pause extends for another 180. So with all this in mind, it's likely that the June 16th hearing is going to be canceled. But I think we can all look forward to this saga continuing to unravel as Chad Daybell appears for his arraignment uh, on Wednesday of this week in the district court. We'll try to live stream that here on Profiling Evil. And, and I want to just say thanks for, for supporting us. Take a moment, hit the like and the subscribe button, ring the bell. That way you get notifications of videos like this. Thanks for supporting Profiling Evil, and we'll see you soon at the next crime scene.